let's sing our hello song and get ready to start today. So get your arms up and wave for me. And our song goes like this. Hello, hello, and how are you? Hello, hello, and how are you? Are you good? Are you great? Are you wonderful? Hello, hello, and how are you today? Happy in Our Skin by Fran Manushkin, illustrated by Lauren Tobia, published by Candlewick Press. This book talks about how wonderful it is to be exactly as you are. Look at you. You look so cute in your brand new birthday suit. This is how we all begin, small and happy in our skin. Bouquets of babies, sweet to hold, cocoa brown, cinnamon, and honey gold. Ginger colored babies, peaches and cream too. Splendid skin for me, splendid skin for you. It's terrific to have skin. It keeps the outsides out and your insides in. As you keep growing, your skin grows too. Clever skin for me, clever skin for you. Whoops! When you fall, your skin will heal with a scab, a perfect seal. Sometimes skin has freckles or birthmarks or dimples. We get a tan when it's sunny and when it's freezing, goose pimples. It's delightful to hug and tickle and wrestle, get a scratch when we itch and hold hands and nestle. Skin covers us from head to toes. It's always there beneath our clothes. Yes, we all have skin, but nobody is you. You are one of a kind and your fingerprints too. What a wonderful world, such a hullabaloo. With all of us in it, see the splendid view. Bouquets of people, blooming and boisterous, brawny and thin, loving each day, happy in our skin. The end. Let's sing the song, If You're Happy and You Know It, together. So we're gonna clap our hands, and we're gonna swing our arms, and then we're gonna pat our knees. Can you help me do that? Okay, our song goes like this. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, then your face will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. Arms are next, can you swing them? If you're happy and you know it, swing your arms. If you're happy and you know it, swing your arms. If you're happy and you know it, then your face will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, swing your arms. Okay, find your knees. Here we go. If you're happy and you know it, pat your knees. If you're happy and you know it, pat your knees. If you're happy and you know it, then your face will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, pat your knees. Great job! Thanks for singing and I hope you feel super happy after that song. What's Silly Hair Day with No Hair? By Noreen Paulson, illustrated by Camilla Corosin. Published by Albert Whitman and Company. Let's find out what happens when one girl feels left out and her friends help her feel like she fits in. B. 
B wore hats everywhere. Sometimes B's best friend, Shalia, wore hats too. But B never worried about hat hair like Shalia because under B's hats, there was no hair. B had hair when she was born, a lot of hair. But before B turned four, she was bald. Would her hair grow back? No one knew. B couldn't remember having hair, so most days she didn't think about being bald. Her family loved her. Her friends didn't care. And when people stared, B just smiled. But some days, being bald was all she thought about. Like when Shalia got new hair clips and B wished she could borrow them. Or when a classmate called her a mean name. Or when everyone was excited about Silly Spirit Week at school. Everyone but B. One of the days is Silly Hair Day. What about me? B yanked off her hat. We'll think of something, said Shalia. B wasn't so sure. On Saturday, Shalia suggested a silly wig, so B's mom took them to characters to go. B tried on long wigs, short wigs, and way too big wigs. It's like a hat with hair, said Shalia. But the hair fell in B's eyes, itched her scalp, and tickled her neck. Silly? Yes, thought B, but right? Not quite. On Sunday, the girls tried crafting some silly hair. They cut and glued and clipped and braided. This is it, said Shalia. Silly, thought B. Yes, but right? Not quite. Looks like a nest of gummy worms, said B, flinging the cap in the trash. This wouldn't be so hard if I just had hair. Maybe I should stay home on Friday. But you'd miss the Silly Spirit Week picnic, said Shalia. When B shrugged, Shalia added, if you stay home, I stay home. Then you'll miss the picnic, B sighed. I'll think of something. But would she? On Monday, B had superpowers for Silly Costume Day. But no idea for Silly Hair Day. And she only had three days to think of something. On Tuesday, B rocked Silly Backwards Day, but still no idea for Silly Hair Day. Her stomach fluttered. On Wednesday, B won the Wackiest Hat Award, but an idea for Silly Hair Day? Nope. Now her stomach started flip-flopping. Only one more day to think of something. Then, during lunch on Silly Feet Day, an idea. Silly? Yes, thought B. But right? Um, not quite. Unless Shalia and Miss Chambers agreed. B asked Shalia first. Yes! During recess, the girls headed to Miss Chambers' office. High fives. Silly? Yes. But right? Absolutely. After school, B and Shalia went shopping, rummaged through craft boxes and searched through junk drawers and worked late into the night. The next morning, B's mom dropped the girls off early. One by one, students noticed the new sign outside Miss Chambers' office. Silly hair or head day? Questioned one classmate. What? Why? Asked another. B slowly lowered her hood because now everyone can participate, B and Shalia said together. Their classmates marveled at the silly gem and tattoo designs on the girls' heads. B and Shalia grinned at each other. Silly, yes. And just right. The end. Let's talk about hats. 
There are lots of different reasons to wear hats. Some people wear hats because it's part of a job that they have to do or a uniform that they have to wear. And sometimes they're part of a costume. And occasionally you wear hats just for fun. So we're gonna learn about some different types of hats today and we have a little rhyme to go with it on our flannel board. So the first thing we have is hats on police officers, starchy and blue. Hats on firefighters, shiny and new. Hats on marchers in a band. Hats on astronauts when they land. Hats on farmers made of straw. Hats on artists when they draw. Hats on kids out in the sun. Let's put our sunshine up there to keep them warm. Hats on almost everyone. Look at all those friends wearing hats, just for fun. Did you know that humans have skin covering our bodies? Yeah, so you can feel your skin. It's pretty soft and it has little hairs on there to help keep you warm too. But our other animal friends, most of them do not have skin that feels like ours. So let's talk a little bit about what those animals would feel like if you could pet them or touch them. And our first friend is this bunny. This bunny has soft fur and you could feel its fluffy tail. A bunny rabbit would be nice to pet. Some people even have bunny rabbits as pets and they like to play with them and touch their soft fur. All right, who's next? Ooh, a frog is not soft or cuddly like a bunny. It has kind of rough feeling skin and sometimes it might feel a little bit wet or bumpy. So that's our frog friend. We're gonna put him over here next to our bunny. Let's try, oh, this is a hedgehog. How do you think a hedgehog would feel if you could touch a hedgehog? Maybe a little bit pokey. It has spikes and it feels a little bit rough and definitely not very cuddly. So let's put our hedgehog over here. Now, let's see here. This is a clam that opens up and you can see its little eyes inside. Now, these live in the ocean, so you're probably not gonna have a chance to touch them, but do you think it would feel furry? No, probably not furry. Do you think it would feel soft or hard? Oh, it has a shell, so it feels hard. Yeah, also a little bit wet if you feel one in the ocean, right? We're gonna leave this clam alone. We're gonna put him over here and let's try another friend. How about this friend? Wow, this is a special friend that can pull right into its home, which it carries on its back. This is a turtle. And a turtle shell is gonna feel nice and hard, isn't it? Yes, and not gonna be soft or fluffy because this turtle shell is keeping our turtle friends safe. And they can pull into their shell just like this if they feel like they're in danger and they can pop out to say hello. All right, turtle, we're gonna put you over here with our other friends now. We talked about the shells that you find in the ocean sometimes. You could also find a fish in the ocean. How do you think a fish would feel if you could touch it? It would probably feel wet and it's not soft or furry. Fish have scales on them. So that feels very different than our skin or fur, which is on the bunny rabbit that we saw. 
So let's put our fish over here and we have one more ocean friend. This is a jelly. So the jelly's gonna feel kind of squishy, but you know what? You shouldn't touch a jelly. If you're out in the water and swimming in the ocean and you see one, just let it float on by. Don't touch it. It's gonna be squishy, but it also might hurt you. So let's not touch a jelly in the ocean. But think of all the different coverings that animals have to help protect their bodies, to keep warm, to help them swim through the water. Remember, we have skin, but most of our other animal friends do not. It's time to say goodbye for today. So we're going to sing our goodbye song together and we're gonna do our goodbye train song. So get your arm ready for your choo-choo. And here we go. Oh, the goodbye train is leaving for today. Choo choo. The goodbye train is leaving for today. Choo choo. The goodbye train is leaving. The goodbye train is leaving. The goodbye train is leaving for today. Choo choo. See you next time.